This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Happy New Year, Leon. Happy New Year, Eck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to 2021 and uh, welcome to episode 20, 21 of... I think it's 21. Yeah, of oh, the Motocast. Oh, how's yeah. thing? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the future and that's why we opted for a futuristic topic today. It's <laughs> um, And that's with uh, Gaurav from... New York City, I believe. Oh, and yeah. we're talking about omni channel marketing and then voice integration with Mordic, which may sound rather futuristic. <laughs> far <Indeed. laughs> away, but maybe it's not so far away. So um yeah, let's let's wait for the interview. Um another little teaser that we have up front is the Mordicast newsletter. Yeah. We d I think we did discuss this last time that that Chris, uh, stop sending out. Yeah, yeah. The the unofficial Mordic newsletter is no longer on this earth. Yeah. So um, we said, okay, the research results that we have anyway, uh, we'll just send that out together with every Mordicast episode. And so you have a tiny little newsletter with all the latest and greatest. So yeah, please feel free to sign up at mordicast.com slash newsletter. Indeed, you, you have it in your inbox. Link to that in the show notes, as always. Yeah, yeah <laughs> good point. Yeah, and there was another release back in the Christmas times. We are now in New Year, but I think on the 25th of December, there was a new Mordic release, mm -hmm. the Mordic version 2.2.2, which the two at the end indicates it's a bug fix release. So new, no new features, but a whole bunch of bug fixes and making Mordic a bit better. So that's Mordic 3, right? Not yeah. What did I say? 2.2.2. Ah, I meant 3.2.2, <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah, so no no update for version 2, yeah. but a Christmas update for version 3. Thanks, Norman. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. But that's not the only update. There's another one on the horizon coming. Mm. Yeah, and uh, this one is, is for Mordic 3 and for 2, indeed. Oh, yeah. uh, although we, we just recently said probably version 2 is end of life uh, unless there's going to be some major security things. So, I guess there's major security things. Yeah, uh, indeed. Uh, no, no, super big deal, but mm -hmm. it's it's uh, serious enough that the team decided to take it serious and yep. to do go a really proper way of communication and, and bug fixing. And so there's a, a well-defined date that's January 14th at 3 p.m. UK time. Mm -hmm. Well, the the new the next bug fix releases for two and three will be released on GitHub. It will be announced on Slack, of course, as well, and everybody's advi advised to pick it up uh, short term and and deploy it immediately. And that's not again because it's super critical, but but after all, Mordic is mostly about personal data yeah so we should yeah. be serious about handling that and uh, do a good job in deploying true yeah um yeah yes there's been a good deal of well tutorials and and uh, things out there discussions going on over christmas and we sat down once again to select which which one to talk about in the show and one thing that what stuck out was that <laughs> the, an, an old topic of ours, and that's email verification, yeah. uh, they came up on different places for for some reason. So let's let's start from the beginning. Um, in episode seven of the Mordecast, no, we, a long time ago. Yeah, we we did uh, mention a plugin by Greg White mm -hmm. for connecting. Mordic to a service called ClearOut. Yep. And um, that service, what it does is just uh, receive an email address from Mordic, check whether it is a valid one or not, or maybe unknown, and return that to Mordic. And you can hook that into your campaigns and uh, then improve your quality of the email address base. Yep. Um, and now there are, of course, other services out there that 
do that. And our good friend Joey <laughs> um, did a blog post to describe how to hook into those ser or two of those services. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good description and, and good value there. Um, the point is that the scripts that he's using are, uh, he says, they will not be available forever. So he says, uh, uh, download them now or it's going to be behind a paywall or registration wall or whatever yep. um, short term. So my advice, if you're interested, go to that, that blog post and then check it out and download the script for future use if you like. Um, on the other end, there's one of those services called Mailfloss. Um, they themselves did a really detailed tutorial on, on integrating with Mordic. Um, no scripts involved there, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, so another alternative. So in total, we have now three, or rather four, oh, four. Joey, Joey did two. Uh, there was a fifth idea, because all of the services described involve handing personal data, aka email address, mm -hmm. to a third-party service. So GDPR involved, yep. depending on where you are. Um, and it involves uh, a sort of delay and asynchronous uh, handling yep. so there's no way to do that inside of a, a form submission so my favorite idea was always to to come up with a basic way of doing that w within Mordic oh, without yeah. giving it anywhere that would be perfect yeah yeah um, that's still in the, in the drawer for for future <laughs> realization, and um, maybe one day we'll, we'll get there, or maybe somebody will, sure. will be interested in in sponsoring that or whatever. Um, yeah, maybe we can talk about sponsoring while we're at it uh -huh. uh, for a second, because that that idea has been um, discussed in at least two places recently. Uh -huh. um, and I th think we we should step back a little bit and t uh, explain what we're talking about here. Obviously, Mordic is growing on all ends, and and obviously people have ideas and, and desires, and on even more ends. Of course, <laughs> um, and that in involves the core, so for core features, but also bug fixes in the core. Yep. It involves existing third-party plugins uh, that might get better or fixed or the ideas for new sort of party plugins like we just described with email verification um, now typical way today is there's a small number of developers who do what they deem best mm -hmm. um, sometimes on the basis of, of feedback or voting that they receive but um, the majority of people is non-developers or not uh, not, in, not in that corner, and what they can do is maybe back somewhere, and then uh, other than that, just sit back and wait and, and hope. And um, reality is that th that most people are not developers at all, but would be interested in receiving features and would even be willing to pay a little bit of money for that yeah so crowdfunding means that everybody is able to say okay i am willing to chip in 100 bucks or thousand bucks mm -hmm. or whatever um if that feature gets done by somebody and once enough people um declare that they're willing to pay a little bit of of it and then then somebody may pick it up or or the company who is offering the crowdfunding is, is ready to do it and, and then they they will hopefully deliver and, and people give them a little bit of money. And that is a really good way for open source to get better on all ends. Again, it's not just about features, it might be, it might as well be an annoying bug uh, that's, that, that five people pay 50 <laughs> bucks for yeah. and um, uh, it's out of the way for everybody. A yeah, great concept. Yeah, yeah. In in theory, yes, but it's uh, it's just lacking the infrastructure, mm -hmm. and not only for Mordic, but most projects don't have that really. Uh, for the Mordic core, we are currently really at the point where we want to hook that into GitHub and then make it happen. 
that's obviously just the first step and there's a lot of details involved but but i think it's valuable but as i said it's the same for third-party plugins which is even more tricky to have an a, a common infrastructure in place we oh, yeah. get one step after the other we don't have a marketplace and all maybe on our end for for leuchtfeuer we will try some things some things out and then based on the experiences eventually have something in the modic marketplace yeah so long story short i, th I think that's yet another option for modic to get way better way faster yep. and uh, i'm really curious what you out there think dear listener um so d please please do give us a little bit of feedback join the discussion and uh, we'll keep you updated yeah and then let's take a turn back talking about emails we kind of went off there um there has been a big and really yes good discussion in the Uh, forum about uh, the modic yeah spam issues that modic emails land in the spam folders and that's been a super yeah just fruitable discussion can you say that uh no <laughs> <laughs> but i know what you mean <laughs> <laughs> okay so, so actually i i did not read it but but you but you think it's valuable for people or it's Yeah, valuable. I think that's a better suiting, but yeah. it's valuable. It's uh, definitely yeah. worth a read. Yeah. If you have a problem out there, if you have a problem with emails landing in spam orders, um, you should take it a read and maybe it will help out. Yeah. I think it's not not just a modic issue that emails go to spam orders. Yeah. Um, it's a general challenge for all for everybody who's sending uh, mass emails uh, to to up the deliverability and every every percent better makes a difference yep. yeah yeah good point and um yeah speaking of tutorials etc there's a new one out there from our friends at os training ah, um, didn't they also have a slot at the modicon if i remember no, correctly <laughs> they, they they did the, the training day ah yeah yeah yeah, cool. yeah. um yeah so so Good people, and um, it's not their first more tick video, but it's uh, the first in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is about uh, how to do an anniversary com campaign. So, if you're interested in that or just want to learn about campaign building in general, it's a very well done video. It's worth watching. But uh, I think the bigger point is uh, I'm, I'm really happy to see another video from their side and I hope there's going to be more going forward. So thumbs up. Yeah, we'll see. Always training. You, um, that's it so far. I think, I we're think so. Good to move on to the interview. Yeah. Today. And um, yeah, Gaurav, you may have seen him because he had Did have a slot at Mordicon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good sequel, eh? Um, so he, he did talk about uh, this topic more or less on the Mordicon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in fact, we, we did discuss the interview or this interview a couple of weeks before Mordicon, and that was also the reason why he went to Mordicon. Ah, and yeah, uh, we, we now said, okay, it's still worth discussing and, and may, maybe explaining in, in a dialogue way what this is all about, mm -hmm. because uh, I, I think it's fascinating stuff, and I, I think the interview is, is very, very helpful for everybody who's not deep inside these things, and it was very helpful for me too, as you will soon hear. So, Let's there go. we go. Well, today I'm very happy to welcome a person on the show who has been a speaker at Mordicon, so some of you may have heard him recently, and who has a bit of background in the Drupal world and, and is actually very active in the MarTech world. But today, that person is really focusing on voice and omnichannel marketing, and that person is Gaurav Mishra, located in New York City. Is that right? Welcome, Gaurav. Thanks, Akar. Thanks for having me here. Um, hey. Yeah, glad, glad, to, who, glad to be a part. Yeah, thank you so much. For those who have not seen your talk yet from Modicon, um, tell us a little bit, a bit about yourself first, about uh, what you're doing, where you got there, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So 
Hi, everybody. I'm Gaurav Mishra. You know, as Eckert said, based of New York, you know, still alive, uh, you know, with, with all this pandemic going on in the New York City. So that's a win. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so been with uh, in this industry for about 13 plus years and uh, worked across multiple geographies, uh, you know, used to manage the APAC region for a long time in my mm-hmm. early days of my career. And now I'm looking at the North America region for this region. And largely what I do on a day-to-day basis is work with enterprises. Uh, so organizations like Johnson & Johnson, you know, Staples, you know, Warner Brothers, you know, Estelle Order, you know, Related, uh, on a day-to-day basis for building digital experiences. So consulting with them, brainstorming with them on, you know, how to build, uh, you know, experiences across digital front, how to essentially look at the customer life cycle and, you know, uh, build revenue channels and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, that's my day-to-day work. And, you know, in that, you know, I come across, you know, with, you know, all the time, you know, working on different new channels. Um, voice is a very, very big part of my work in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, digital displays is another big piece. And I'll talk a little bit of that later on, uh, you know, when we go deep. But, but yeah, we, we, we've seen a lot of explosion in, in non-web, non-mobile channels in the last few years with enterprises. Yeah, very cool, because I think that is definitely an up-and-coming topic and uh, in a different, on a different level in different parts of the world. So some are ahead of the curve, some may be behind of the curve, and a certainly interesting topic for everybody. So tell us what you mean by that, by, by thinking larger, by, by involving more channels, etc. Um, how, how can that reach a goal and... and um, Next step, then, we, how can we do that, all that with marketing automation? Sure, can you, you paint know, maybe a picture of some, some multi-channel, my multi-channel campaign to start with to help us understand sure. really what you're talking about? Sure, absolutely. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch base with both, both of the points. I could, uh, um, and if so, yes, absolutely. We, the basics are always there, which is, you know, you said attract, nurture, convert, right? Which is, you know, always the basics that morticians um, and any marketing automation you know uh, you know expert you know always always take care of that and um, traditionally email sms you know web mob, you know channels are are very good channels right and you know and they've been tried and tested all over these years uh, but you know uh, but having said that you know these channels are also extremely saturated right you know the the attention span is getting smaller and smaller and there was a time when you know uh, we had an attention span of about 30 seconds uh, you know a uh, few few years back right when we used to run different marketing campaigns but a recent report uh, came in where you know it said that the gen z uh, which is the new the next generation attention span is about seven seconds now with such much such a saturation in in all the channels traditional channels as, as per se which is email web sms right how do you essentially capture the attention right in the seven seconds and and that's where you know the whole concept of saying that you know which the new channel which are the new channels which are not yet tapped which are you know more exciting and you know more uh, you know easier to uh, compete in you know uh, so how how do we how do we go about that right and that's where the whole channel of the whole different channels come in place uh, so uh, you know and 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 that's where we, you know we have we are looking at a lot of trend in the in the marketing organizations and in large enterprises not really focusing or if they're focusing obviously the focus would be always on you know the traditional channel but doing a bigger focus or a much larger focus onto these new channels coming in digital displays virtual tryouts you know voice wearables right so these are becoming a big big part of the focus from a channel's point of view and mm-hmm. and and onto your question on multi channels right and answer that's i'm glad that you brought that point uh, multi channels you know is is a, is in my opinion and again a little personal opinion but you know i've seen that you know coming as a as a trend in the industry as well people are actually not looking at multi channel right now but they are looking at something called omni channel and there's a very uh, you know basic difference between these two right and a, a lot of people actually you know use them interchangeably but but there is a there is a very basic difference between those two so when you know people look at multi channel they say that okay i'm doing email i'm doing sms i'm doing web right uh, and let me do voice and digital displays and you know uh, virtual tryouts as well and what they do is that they look at these channels in silos 
right? Rather than looking at them holistically as one worldview, right? And that's where you know, the concept of omni-channel comes in. Because omni-channel tells us that let's not look at each of the channels in silos, but look at a customer journey, right? Look at that ent- entire attract, nurture, convert journey uh, in one cycle and say that how different touch points are actually, you know, helping in different from a convergent point of view across different channels in that entire customer journey, right? So, you know, just to give you an example, let's say, you know, a, you know, a person comes in, um, you know, in a hotel and, you know, for, for a reservation. Once he's, doing, you know, once he, you know, lands, you know, down from a flight in the airport, he will check in from his mobile, right? And he will know that what are the different things that is going on in that, that place, right? Uh, once he goes into the counter and when he's checking in in the in the hotel itself, he will be giving his information or either to a kiosk or to a real person, right? A lot of lot of lot of you know uh, you know uh, organizations or a lot of hotel industries are actually bringing in all this self services kiosk to reduce mm-hmm. you know manpower. So he will come in, he will actually punch his information into a kiosk, check in, and you know give his preferences and things like that there itself, and then. You know, he will go on, he will walk through a lobby where he will have a lot of digital displays, you know, giving a lot of information in which he would be, uh, you know, seeing a lot of things going going on and a lot of information around the hotel, around nearby attractions and things like that. And once he goes into the room, you know, uh, for example, Marriott did that recently, right, at, you know, successful implementation with Alexa, where you have Alexas in the room. And it allows them to uh, do a lot of, you know, automation, like, you know, controlling the temperature of the room, ordering stuff, you know, knowing about a lot of information, right, you know, from the Alexa itself. And he will, you know, interact with that Alexa in that point, in that channel. Now, in that entire journey, we have actually looked at five different channels, right? We have, uh, you know, looked at the, you know, the web channel when he made the reservation, a mobile when he looked at essentially uh, checking in from the airport. Then we looked at the kiosk where he did in, you know information you know in person in the in the uh, you know checking in the in the hotel itself then we looked at the digital display where he found and you know consumed information at different places and then the fifth channel is the alexa which is the voice which is inside the room in the in room experience right mm-hmm. now if you want to run a campaign uh, for increasing your uh, revenue from the happy hour that you are you know doing in you know uh, inside the restaurant of that hotel Right? How do you essentially, you know, touch, you know, these each touch points, each channels, right? From web to mobile to, you know, kiosk to digital displays to the Alexa, to essentially, mm-hmm. you know, give that happy hour information to that person, right? So that you know that person can actually get excited enough to come to the bar, have drinks, right? And you know, essentially give you, you know, conversion on that on that channel, right? Or from sorry, from that campaign from that happy hour campaign. And that's where the omni-channel view comes in, right? That when you start the the the, the, the entire touch turning, so when the person is walking in and, you know, going into the kiosk, as soon as you check in, you, you pop up an information and ask him that he does he want to register, uh, right, for the happy hour case, right? Um, and if, let's say, you know, he might register, he might not register, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but that's an awareness piece definitely that you need to there. And once he's walking in, you are actually showcasing a lot of new pictures, a lot of in, you know interesting pictures around on the digital displays, on how my, how uh, exciting and how nice happy hour is, how he can meet you know new people in this happy hour. So a lot of visual centric campaign information or assets right on the digital displays that will mm-hmm. make him more interested around this happy hour. And when he room, reaches his room, uh, you know Alexa, and as he you know gets to you know, uh, just just let's say you know, maintain the temperature of the room. You know, along with that, Alexa says, "Hey, also, can you uh, you know, do you know that we are running a happy hour at 6 p.m. You know, uh, where you can have these cocktails, which are the best top cocktails our bartender makes, right? Do so, you want what me to you reserve did, a table? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely, right? And reserve <laughs> a table there as well, right? Uh, with with Alexa, right? Uh, so with that you know, three, four touch points, right? In that marketing channel, what you did is that you are not looking at each channel as a silo, but what you're doing is that you are running one campaign and you're using and touching each and every touch points, uh, you know, uh, from a from an omni-channel point of view across each, uh, that entire customer journey. And and okay. that's, the, that's the real power that's coming in, right? So organizations like Estee Lauder, Marriott, 
you know, all these big organizations have realized it, right? Uh, so, for example, if you walk into a store right now of Estelle Order, you see a lot of virtual tryouts there. And with pandemic, uh, where you are not allowed to try out a lipstick color, right, on, you know, <laughs> as you used to do earlier, you know, this virtual tryouts, this whole investment that they've been doing in virtual tryouts over years are now really, uh, help, you know, very useful because now you mm. can essentially, you know, try out lip different lipsticks and, you know, and things like that. And yeah. marketers are running campaigns you know, in this, uh, you know, when you're trying one lipstick, they are giving you a bundle, uh, you know, coupon and saying that, hey, you know, this is a Halloween bundle. This is a Thanksgiving bundle and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. this is a brave new world. Yeah. Um, getting back to the hotel example, which I find fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, when I brought up the Alexa reserve a table for me example, that, that is uh, the opposite direction. So it's a signal from the user to the system everything else seems to be a one-way direction and of course when you build want to build an interactive con campaign it's always important to receive signals of any so kind from from uh, users so when you think of all the new channels yep. is yep. that yep. typically a one-way one-way street or no no absolutely not it, it, it is always you know two-way street so just just going back to your you know uh, the, the the hotel example right so if you know that uh, you know uh, so <clears throat> typically the way that marketers think right they always look at you know running awareness you know and concentration campaigns and you know and then you know uh, conversion campaigns is is always the you know goal by running this campaign right conversion is always the goal so you know when you even you know, when you're doing awareness messaging on kiosk if i if i if as a user i just go there and register a table or reserve a table right there in the kiosk then uh, you know then you know, a, a message goes back to the, you know, the, to the campaign that this person is already converted. This person is okay. already registered. The, um, you know, we the, can stop the campaign. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Right, no, yeah. And stop the campaign or just move that campaign mm, messaging changing. to more saying that, exactly. okay, right, uh, great. You know, we, so once, once he talks to the Alexa and say that, you know, so the Alexa, instead of saying, hey, you know, there's a happy hour going on and you can meet new people. Instead of that, he said that, hey, great. You know, uh, also looking forward to, you know, host you at uh, the happy hour at uh, 7 p.m. And we have reserved your table and, you know, and, and that information is with us, right? So making it more personal, right? But mm -hmm. really not, you know, looking to convert him because that person is already converted. So, you know, all these touch points are actually really, you know, not one way, right? Uh, virtual tryouts, digital displays, there are kiosks. Um, you know, these are all very two-way conversations, right? Uh, and, you know, capture can capture touch points events all the time okay do you see other i mean dig, digital display for instance i don't really see how that could be a a two-way conversation unless there's a qr code or something that you could scan is that what you have in mind yeah yeah sure absolutely so you know um uh, uh, so you know again again we can take a hotel example but you know more than that if you look at you know any large organizations right um, and uh, you know and you know if you look at in person in in you know rooms in ho in lobby kind of experiences right digital displays mm. uh, you know uh, uh, so the two kind of digital displays are there right um, um you know you 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 would see a lot of touch based digital displays right coming in and, oh, you know, a lot of, you know, if you're walking to the malls, if you're walking to the airports, you would hmm. see actually a lot of touch-based digital displays already in place, which can keep, can take inputs of people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which is, uh, McDonald's is a good example. Like McDonald's do have this kind of displays in, in you know, as kiosks, right, in their, in their uh, right, uh, you know, in their stores. But apart from that, you know, yes, you, you're right. You know, QR codes is another, uh, another good way, right? And, you know, a good example is China, right? And China has been, you know, a huge user of the QR code uh, all these years. And, you know, uh, so it, it is ranging from payments to, right, uh, you know, to essentially different experiences, right? Um, you know, different augmented reality experiences. All of that can be actually driven by the AR, you know, the augmented, the, the, the QR code. So, yes, that's, a, that's another way of coming in. The third interesting way, which is not a ma mainstream, but I believe it would become a mainstream um, uh, very soon in the next two, three years, is essentially tracking, right? Eye tracking and, you know, the, the gestures, if you will, right? Gestures, uh, which is uh, still new. It's, the technology is not new. The te technology has been around for some time, uh, mm. but the implementation is not on the scale yet. 
but gestures are becoming a, a, a you know a, a big part of the uh, you know technology shift as well which we will see mainstream coming in so all this digital display would have a gesture controlled um, you know input you know where you can come in and you know build different do different gestures to essentially uh, you know uh, you know do a lot of activities um, you know and if we know you know which is a little scary part uh, i would i would believe a lot, it, it spooks a lot of people yeah. um, uh, but big tech has been capturing a lot of face recognition um, right uh, and a lot of voice recognition data all these years right uh, i would not be surprised right if you walk into a onto in, in 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 front of a digital display in the next few years and you know that that digital display would recognize you and personalize the information uh, on the basis of uh, you know the store data that you it already would have with either facebook or google or you know mm. apple or, or something like that right oh, my so goodness. yeah yeah so i think it's it's a there is there is the technology is already there right yeah. it's just that uh, you know that it's the scale of how much what what you can do right uh, from from an input point of view is just going to increase from day by day it's it's going mainstream right uh, especially with after pandemic it has you know kind of multiplied in terms of the adoption right uh, because mm. don't nobody wants to do touch right anymore right uh, and <laughs> you know uh, and and you know less and less people want to talk to each other right there is more machines coming in uh, for for doing more other stuff right more voice more mm-hmm. gestures so yeah, yeah. it's it's going to increase you know it really is a brave new world in the overall yep. sense <laughs> yeah 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 okay but but um from from a um eagle was an eagle eyes perspective or so mm-hmm. um w- w- today in mordic we are thinking digital as in computer device so i'm sending signals to a browser to an email client to an sms client whatever mm-hmm. and and users interact with that mm-hmm. and we have uh, old school out of home uh, advertising mm-hmm. and what we are basing ta- uh, basically talking here about is uh, is tons of channels that are digital that but that are not on my personal device but out there in the wild yep um so yeah and i'm cu- really curious what else will will come to it and what will really work out but but uh, i also think it it takes deep understanding and creativity creativity to turn all that into a working campaign that is actually reaching a goal you talked about awareness which is probably easier to achieve uh, yeah. but but conversion is of course a more attractive goal and if we can help support that yeah. um th- then that's definitely worth it um yeah absolutely now, and, and yeah absolutely and just just to just to you know uh, echo to your point I think you know we while we think that you know the mobile and web and sms is the only channels uh, we can leverage right now right more and more when 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 we have talked with uh, and wh- when we were working with companies you know usually all the rest of the channels are already there it's not yet the you know the marketers are just not leveraging them right, right. so you know if what i would you know, ha- you know strongly suggest all the time to the marketers that they should you know just look very closely to their current uh, customer life cycle right and find different touch points uh, that the customer is touching right even if they are not pro- and there's a good chance that they are just not leveraging these channels they might be mm. there they are just not leveraging it right um, uh, already right so just wanted to make that point yeah yeah excellent now million dollar question what does all this have to do with moric <laughs> absolutely no the no, good point i think i think uh, obviously uh, rel- uh, you know if there is no practical implementation then you know all this is just a just a theory right um uh, so you know what so motic you know is good the good part of the motic is that unlike the competitions like you know i would say marketo or you know uh, you know uh, salesforce or other 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 platforms motic is open right motic is completely mm-hmm. open now that means that if i am running um, <coughs> there, there is a very interesting company i can't name about it but Uh, that we worked for you know sometime uh, you know last year uh, and you know it's a very old com- uh, organization that actually works with farmers all over the united states okay mm-hmm. and uh, the you know interesting part that all these farmers they actually get all this information about grains about you know the prices around uh, you know commodities and and things like that you know on a on a very old uh, small 
you know, I would not say a kiosk, but it's a small like a, a, a display that they have, which is literally a, you know, a monochrome uh, display, right? You know, if you remember the monochrome displays, right? Literally a monochrome display, which gets, actually gets the data from satellite. So it's not even connected to the Wi-Fi. It directly uh-huh. gets the data from the satellite, right? I would have never imagined something like this still exist, right? In, yep. this, in, this, in this days, right? Now, that means that, you know, now let's say if they want to, you know, use something like, Marketo today, right? You know, Marketo yep. would never, never in their life would be able to, you know, actually run a campaign for in this, you know, old monochrome displays because they, they just they just can't integrate it, right? Um, and and that's where Motic, the power of Motic comes in, the power of open source comes in, right? Because you can actually, or anybody, right, can essentially, you know, say that, hey, you know, I know these are the channel which is not in the top priority for a organization like Adobe, right? Because this is not like on to scale. But in my use case, there is a channel which is, you know, very, you know, useful, right? Uh, you know, uh, if, you know, if, uh, you know, it can be a, a television, right? Where I'm using a, running a yoga studio and in the television, I have an app where, you know, I run, you know, yoga classes or it can be, a, you know, a, a, a kitchen work, you know, where I'm, you know, doing a juicer and, you know, there is a small Google Nest Hub right uh, in the kitchen uh, where you know uh, you know people are actually taking you know recipes right uh, on on which juices to make right so you know depending on the organization uh, kind of organization that you are there always with some unique uh, touch points that you would have uh, depending on your business depending on your you know the work that you do and and there's a good chance that you know organizations like adobe or salesforce would never imagine even going in that direction because it's just too unique Right for for a few users, but that doesn't mean it's not important for you. It mm-hmm. is imp- important for at least you you as a use case, right? And that's where you know the whole Motic uh, you know APIs and you know there is a there's already a lot of applications already a lot of plugins already there, right? You there is a Twilio plugin uh, which does a lot of co- you know voice and call uh, a lot of you know uh, you know uh, t- you know two two way SMS you know, input and output SMS as well. But you know there is there is there is tons of you know ways of you know, building these plugins on Motic, which can mm. be actually very very you know usable for you, right? Or very very useful for you for for your use case, but not be not be as big, you know, for for an Adobe to build a connector, right? Yeah. So using these plugins to build connectors, um, um, you know, or leveraging community connectors already out there. There are Zapier. There is a Zapier. Uh, connector available in the Motic community, and oh, Zapier yeah. has a has a very very huge integration, uh, mm-hmm. right? You know, it, it integrates with Alexa, it integrates with Google, uh, you know, uh, you know, voice, um, it, you know, you know, there's a good chance that it connects with digital displays as well. Um, but so, so you don't really you're not really you know dependent on uh, on a large organization to build connectors, but you can actually get a freelancer to build a quick plugin, or you can do a quick plugin on yourself. Uh, and and essentially leverage a channel that you might not be leveraging right now and increase your conversions. Okay, so uh, may, you're already describing where Mordic can be unique, mm-hmm. but, but um, uh, first of all, all this omni-channel orchestration that you um, you are pitching, you say that that could be done uh, by Mordic. Mordic could be the hub of of all this omni-channel channel efforts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And, and yeah, we we need need an interface and plugin for everything, but but I I agree that's probably not a really big deal. And then the ne- next thing is the other half of of the medal that you described was come up with what really works for you, what really matters for your users, and how how you can really reach them and come up with a, an integrated um, and smart campaign. And uh, I, I still love the the hotel thing that you described and the happy hour example <laughs> and maybe it would really be a, a fantastic showcase for Mordic to just set up a, a demo environment and uh, make that work together and like, like have those four or five touch points and let them play together and maybe even shoot a video inside of a hotel to, to demonstrate what we mean and how it can be done with Mordic wow I'd love to do that 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 sounds like a wonderful idea, actually. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, and, and it's very doable and very easy to do, right? And I think one of the things that we can actually showcase is that why it sounds complex, how easy it is to implement this on the Motic. 
You yeah. already have the basics in place. You're already designing a campaign. You're already designing a messaging. You're already, you know, uh, creating different, uh, you know, touch points, right, in the Mautic itself. It's just that, you know, how do you essentially just extend it to, you know, other, other places? But, yeah, you know that's, that's a wonderful idea. I think I really want to tackle that. If you don't mind, I'll get back to you maybe with a question or two or maybe ask you for a creative idea or comment. Sure. And then we'll make it happen. Cool. Hey, Absolutely. I love it. We would love to, would love to participate in that. But that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a very wonderful idea. And, uh, and I, I would like to you know, insist that you know, it, is, you know, it, is, it is pretty straightforward to do it. Right? It's not mm -hmm. as complex, but it, it would be a great demo to uh, you know, put together uh, for the Mautic community. Hmm. Hmm, I'm excited. <laughs> cool. V very, very good. Um, I think I, I took a lot of notes already and I, I'll ask you afterwards to give me uh, some URLs that I can, can put in the show notes for people to look at examples or at, what do I know, Zapier integrations, etc. Mm -hmm. So if you, dear listener, want to learn more about it, I'll point you to a ton of things, including the, the Morticon talk. Um, is there a LinkedIn page or something where people can find you, Gaurav? Sure, absolutely. Uh, uh, you can, uh, the, I think the best way to, you know, find me is, you know, just go to gmishra.com, which is, uh, you know, my, you know, shot of Gaurav Mishra, G of Gaurav and then Mishra. So gmishra.com and it will take you to my LinkedIn profile, oh. right? Yeah. And connect me with there on and that. Or I can, you can find me on Twitter as well on gmishra again and you know i'm pretty active on both twitter and linkedin and you know would love to connect um, um and, and share more excellent i'll put it all in the show notes yeah and um i thank you very very much for your time today and the insights uh, there's a lot of experience behind it you can tell and i'm very much looking forward to do some some really nice showcase with it thank you Akir. thank you for having me here you know it was lovely talking to you Uh, and thanks for, uh, you know, Morty community for hosting, uh, you know, uh, in the podcast, you know, absolutely. We'd love to, you know, stay in the conversation, keep, you know, keep on, you know, building new ideas, building new, uh, you know, new exciting solutions and looking forward to participate. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time and talk to you soon. Bye bye. Take care. Take care. Yeah. Stay safe. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. What an interesting interview. And on our side, the world has continued to turn and apparently we are having someone at Leuchtfeuer over to write a master thesis about this topic about omnichannel using Mordek. Yeah, yeah. So after the interview Gorov and I stayed in touch and we, we said yeah he, he would be willing to assist in in the in the project that that just came up in the conversation. That's super cool, yeah. And we actually found found uh, a girl to Uh, spend a couple of months on this and not only write a thesis but actually implement things oh um and well i'm, I'm really excited yeah, so am i yeah yeah um which takes us to what's what else is coming up in the next weeks and uh, month maybe and of course that's dominated by morticon who could have thought <laughs> yeah yeah well we we discussed this in the, in the last episode i think yep, and did. the idea once again is to have a or another virtual morticon in q2 mm -hmm. so maybe in june and um maybe maybe to have a in-person event in in q4 hopefully that's possible Certainly not a global event but yep. maybe uh north american or european whatever uh th something but for right now the focus is all on on virtual modicon number two yep. and that means that the work has already begun for the team for the modicon team and if you did like the previous modicon if you maybe joined it or if you had the chance to watch some videos or if you are interested in such a thing in general then you're very much invited to join the team and uh, join the preparations in whatever your role might role might be maybe organizational maybe um, facilitating a track or giving a talk or whatever yep. uh, contact me about the options and and whatever it is that, that your focus is you're there's surely going to be a spot for you and of it's course <laughs> all appreciated yeah you up every hand is a helping one 
<laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leon, anything else? No, I think I'm, I'm done for today. Oh, so am I. Um, oh. the, on, the only thing that, that just comes up, um, I was going to say get in touch, give us mm -hmm. feedback, and, and that's true. Please do. Yeah, and please. you'll find us on all the channels out there except for TikTok. <laughs> Uh, yet <laughs> um, oh, maybe maybe <laughs> the only thing missing uh, though is is any contact information on on the modicon on the mod, on the modicast, Mod modicast. <laughs> website I, i just learned so yeah thanks for that tip and we'll add contact information on the website too until then please just google us or, or <laughs> search within your preferred uh social mm, channel social media and, and but, yeah. but but do get in touch and do give us feedback of all sorts please Please. <laughs> okay. Then. Other than that, looking forward to see you next time in the Motorcast. Yeah, take care. Here next time. Cheers. Bye bye. bye.